Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to the third and final update for spring. We're going to get together 11 uh, long range models to see what they're showing um, for the season ahead. Of course, had a very mild winter, exceptionally so, uh, and also a really wet winter as well. We'll see whether this is predicted to carry on into the spring or whether we're expecting a pattern change from the long range models. And then at the end of the video, I've got to come to a decision about whether I agree with what these long range models are suggesting or whether I want to go my own way and have my own ideas. So it's going to be interesting to see how things uh, play out for this third and final spring 2016 forecast. Before I get on with that, though, just to say about the ads at Gazza, there's so sleep articles on all the pages. Have a browse through the widgets and click through the links if there's any articles that you're interested in. And thanks very much for doing that. There's also video ads on those pages. They open up in content, you watch them, they'll close back up again. And it is helping to pay for our website. Um, just say most of the long range ones that you're going to see in this uh, update can be found on the links page. So if you want to see these long range models for yourself, you certainly can. Going to start off with a Russian model, but I don't want to dwell on uh, this um, too quickly because clearly there is a bit of an issue with the uh, Russian model. So this is a temperature anomaly uh, probability map uh, for the spring, for March to May. And obviously there's quite a big problem here because the whole world basically has been forecast to be average or above average. Um, there's no below average temperatures anywhere across the whole of the world. Uh, and I think the model has probably uh, lost the plot a little bit. It's probably got a bit wrong uh, for this update. So I think we'll exclude uh, that one. Um, let's go through to APEC then. This is a collaboration of uh, global MET agencies, particularly based in the southern hemisphere. Um, first of all, we're going to deal with temperature and then have a look at precipitation. I'm not going to show you the 500 bit of our height anomaly for the spring because that looks a bit strange as well, to be honest. Could be the El Nino that's producing all of these odd looking charts uh, for this update. Anyway, the temperature probability is coming out above average, so a milder than average spring being predicted here by the APEC model. Uh, if we have a look at the precipitation uh, anomaly, that's coming out a bit above average, so a mild and fairly wet spring being predicted here by the APEC. And that is in line with the trend from last month. Um, the second update, uh, many of the models were going for a uh, milder than average, also a wetter than average spring. What we see here from APEC is very much in line uh, with that sort of idea. Having a look at the Brazilian model next, these are the 500 millibar height anomalies uh, for March to May, so covering the full spring period. All of the models we see in this update are going to cover the full spring period, so there's not going to be any messing about uh, with this one. They all cover um, March through to May. Uh, this one always a bit different. This is 500 millibar heights, as I say, and blue is extrapolating to high pressure with red and uh, yellow and orange and pink extrapolating to low pressure and normally that's the other way around on most other height anomaly charts. So what we're seeing um, from this model is that we've got quite a lot of ridging up to the north and the northeast of the country uh, actually quite a lot of high pressure to the north, low pressure is to the south. And um, when it's quite a block spring, uh, this, I don't think it would be particularly wet. The wind uh, direction is critical here. If it's northeasterly, particularly early in the spring, then it could be quite cold. Uh, if it's southeasterly, then especially later in the spring, when we get through to May, um, it's going to be quite warm. So it's difficult to say from the 500 millibar height anomaly quite what the temperatures are doing but that is a pretty block looking signal uh, for the spring so let's have a look at the temperature uh, anomalies this again is for march to may uh, the full spring period and coming out uh, a bit warmer than average and what about the precipitation anomaly that's coming out uh, near normal so um not a particularly wet spring being seen here you would expect it to be uh, with blocking up to the north and the northeast. The temperature on me is interesting, uh, particularly early in the spring. I don't think it would be that warm. If it but perhaps was to carry on into May, though, uh, then you could get quite a warm May, um, particularly from that sort of pattern. But it is a fairly unusual pattern that the, uh, the Brazilian model is going for there, with quite a lot of blocking up to the north. 
Right, let's have a look at the JMA next. These are the 500 millibar height anomalies, first of all, on the mid latitude view. Of course, I show you the JMA, I showed you it earlier in the month, um, and we had an in-depth look at it, so I'm not going to look at everything that we could look at with this model, because it is a very, uh, it is a very uh, in-depth model. There's loads of things you can look at. We're just going to look at the three monthly anomalies um, via the tropical and mid latitude view. So the British Isles is just here um, in the far top right hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it. I'll say this is the three monthly anomaly. So we've got a trough of low pressure up to the north and a ridge is down to the south. It means that the jet streams came more or less through the country. It's quite a westerly spring. And odds with the Brazilian model, quite a westerly spring coming through here with the most unsettled conditions up in the north and the wettest conditions down in the south. The temperature anomaly for this spring is coming out a little bit above average. This does mask a bit of uh, intramonth variation, though. Um, and the pattern is changing on a month-by-month -month basis uh, with this. The mean winged arrow charts are showing generally westerlies are dominating. You probably can't make that out too well. And in terms of the rainfall anomaly, that's coming out above average. You expect it to be above av above average with the rainfall and precipitation because the westerlies are being enhanced here. So uh, quite a westerly, fairly mild but unsettled spring um, being signalled by the JMA. Uh, there is intramonth variation in with that, however. The uh, CANSITS model is the next one to look at. Um, and we're going to start off with mean sea level pressure. Uh, uh, means are for monthly periods, so uh, we can't look at the three monthly anomaly. You have to break it down into uh, monthly uh, periods. So for the uh, mean sea level pressure for March, first of all, um, well, what we see is that uh, we've got some ridging up to the north and we've got low pressure uh, down uh, to the south. You'd expect winds to be more sort of easterly with that one. If have a look at April, um, very similar pattern, it's placing a trough more or less over the country, so quite an unsettled April being seen here with a ridge up to the north, and again it means we could be opening the door sort of northeasterly type influences with that one, and then going through into May, looks very unsettled spring if this comes off, um, May has a deep trough low pressure in the Atlantic, this is more westerly though, a more classic flat uh, westerly type flow as we're going through into uh, May. The um, temperature anomalies are looking like this. So March comes out near normal, so not a particularly mild March uh, being signalled there. Uh, April coming out near normal as well. Given the pattern we're seeing, I would expect those two months to actually be a little bit cooler than this, and maybe even going on to the side of cooler than average, but certainly no sign in March or April of anything especially mild. And then we go through to May, and this is more of a classic westerly month, so May the temperatures do pick up, we go above average, a warmer than average May uh, being signal. The uh, precipitation uh, anomaly looks like this, so not too bad for March, it's driest to the north and west, and wettest down to the south and the east. April looking like a very wet month potentially, so pretty grim signals for April, above average rainfall. I think temperatures, although they're being signaled there to be near normal, will probably be below average, if anything. And then May is also signaled to have uh, above average rainfall as well, and that's a westerly dominated month. So, um, well, it's an unsettled spring being signaled here. March is a little bit drier, but April and May looking pretty wet. And in terms of the temperature, they're a bit up and down, but starting off, I would think, in the first couple of months, quite cool, and then reverting to something a bit warmer in May. Let's have a look at the American uh, models next. We'll start off with the experimental NASA model. This one looks a bit odd. This is 500 millibar heights for the three monthly period. Um, um, so what we see is that I've got ridging around Greenland and extending down into the Atlantic. Um, there's no trough over us, but I think the way the ridging is set up, we probably do have a weak trough there uh, around the UK as an anomalous uh, sort of trough of low pressure with the flow perhaps going a bit like that. Um, in terms of the temperature signal for the spring, that's coming out near or to a bit above average. So, um, and most of Europe also looking uh, quite warm there uh, for the spring as well. So maybe my interpretation of the, um, of the height anomaly was a little bit wrong. It's certainly not a particularly warm spring by any means, but not a cold spring 
um, being signaled there from NASA. And in terms of the uh, precipitation, we just have to have a look at the scale. So in terms of the precipitation, uh, we're coming out a little bit wetter than average. So again, this is following on what we saw last month, an unsettled spring is being predicted here among many of these models the rainfall anomalies are coming out above average the temperatures are a little bit uncertain probably overall erring on the side of a bit above average with the temperatures but not as clear cut as the more broader signal which is for an unsettled uh, spring the cfs v2 uh next um this is 700 millibar heights and uh, what we're seeing with this one is that we've got a trough of low pressure in the atlantic a ridge is down to the south of the country rather like that it means we're bringing the westerlies through the uk a bit uh, like that. So again, it's a westerly spring being seen here, and you expect that to be relatively unsettled. The temperature signal is coming out near normal, uh, so not a particularly warm spring being seen, but also not a particularly cold spring, um, just coming out near normal uh, with the temperatures. The warmth is over in the east and the northeast of Europe. And look at this, again, we've got that trend, which is for rainfall to be coming out uh, above average. And you would expect it because it's a westerly spring. The jet stream is coming through rather like that. So it's coming straight through the country and going into Europe. You would expect quite a westerly unsettled not particularly cold, but not particularly warm spring with that one. Hoog van der Doel next. Now, these are a little bit different. This is a 500 bit of a height anomaly forecast for the spring, March to May, but this is analog based. So it's not based on a, a, a computer generated model. Hoog has looked at the sea surface temperature anomalies across the world in January. This was generated last month in January looked at sea surface temperature anomalies across the world, and then from that created an, an, created an analog base forecast going forward. So first of all, this is a 500 millibar height anomaly chart that Hoog has come up with. And we were in those salmon pink colours there, so that implies more ridging um, with the trough out into the Atlantic. This is a different pattern than what we've had uh, before. It means that the jet stream is probably going a bit like that. So we're probably on the mild side of the jet. We're probably bringing up some fairly warm air uh, from the south or the southeast. So the temperature anomaly is coming out significantly milder than average with Hoog van der Doel. Um, a milder than average spring being predicted there. And the precipitation, that's coming out a bit drier uh, than average. So Hoog is different um, to the models. Most models are going for a wetter than average spring, quite an unsettled spring. Hoog is going for a drier spring. Um, and above average temperatures. Uh, so that one's a little bit different, but keep it at the back of your mind. But the analog based forecast is a bit different to the computer generated forecast. Jamstech IOD next. Now, this is going for a significantly colder than average spring. Um, this is the first model that we've seen, I think, that's going uh, significantly cold on average. And there we are, most of northern, central, western Europe coming out with below average temperatures. What this model normally does is it has significantly colder temperatures early on, say three months from the uh, period or six months from the period that you're interested in. I and mean, as it gets closer and closer, it moderates out and becomes milder. So the fact we're just um, a couple of weeks away uh, from the spring now, or less than that, I mean, just a couple of days away, but when this was generated, we was a couple of weeks away from the spring. Um, the fact that we are so close to spring, it's coming out with quite a cold anomaly is interesting. Uh, but it's doing that because normally it would revert back to a milder pattern. Nevertheless, it's, it is going for a cold and average spring, and it's the first model to be seeing uh, that that we've looked at. I think the rainfall anomaly is coming out above average, so a wet spring being seen on here. And what's going on is that the jet stream is on a southerly track. We've got this ridging up to the north and west, so jet stream's going on a southerly track, and uh, low pressure is running through here. So... It is uh, an unsettled spring, Matt, still got that scene. It's just different with the temperatures because we've got the ridging up to the north and west, which is producing these winds from a north or northeasterly type uh, direction. So still agreeing with the trend for an unsettled and wet spring, or above average rainfall for spring, but it's colder with the temperatures. 
Beijing Climate Centre next. We're coming towards the end. So we've just got one more model to go after this one. Uh, this is similar to who van der Duel, actually. These are 500 millibar heights for the spring. And we see a ridge up to the uh, east and the northeast country. You can see it over here as well with a trough of low pressure in the Atlantic and going a bit like that. So the jet stream is doing something like that. Places us on the mild side of the jet. And we're probably bringing in east or southeasterly flows, which, of course, early on could be quite cold. But later in the spring, get through to May time, that could be warmer. So what are the temperatures doing? They're coming out warmer than average. So this is very much in line with, uh, with what Hugh Van der Duel, uh, was going for with his analogues, uh, above average temperatures there uh, for the spring. And in terms of precipitation, that's coming out near normal. Um, no great uh, trend to be drier, uh, unlike what we see from Hoog Van Door, but not a particularly wet spring either, so just near normal precipitation from the uh, Beijing Climate Centre. And then finally, our very own UK Met Office will whiz it through these very, very quickly. This is the uh, mean sea level pressure anomaly for March to May. And uh, what we see again is that we've got trusses of low pressure to the north and go down to northeast with a ridge through the middle part of the Atlantic. The jet stream probably going a bit like that. So I expect this to be an unsettled spring and quite a westerly spring as well, with maybe the jet stream on a northwest southeast trajectory, which could bring some cooler conditions through at times. It's not a particularly cold spring, have to emphasize back because it's not a great deal of northern blocking. But there could be some cooler conditions pushing through from the northwest at times. The temperature anomaly is coming out near normal to a little bit above average. Um, cold and average out to the west, of course. We're in the Atlantic. We've got that cold, uh, those cold sea surface temperature anomalies. And the precipitation anomaly, that's coming out um, average to a little bit above average. Uh, so, uh, again, it's that trend. And we've seen across most of these models um, for quite an unsettled spring. A little bit different on the temperatures, but I think overall they probably are coming out above average. The Jams Tech, I do rate the Jams Tech quite highly when it's just one month away uh, from the season. Um, that's going cold, so I have to keep it at the back of our mind, but it does look isolated, not going to have a great deal of support really from any of these models. So the trend amongst the model output definitely is uh, still, as it was last month, for an unsettled westerly spring, rainfall probably coming out above average, um, and temperatures generally a bit above average as well. So what's Gav's weather is uh, going to predict for this spring? Uh, well, I think the first thing to say is that um, uh, whilst I don't think we're going to have a, 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 an especially cold spring, I do think, uh, once we have these three months out, I do think at some point through this spring, we're probably going to get a fairly significant colder period. It may come in March, it may come in April, it may be between March and April. But I think at some point we'll get a week or two of uh, it's pretty significantly colder than average weather. However, I think as we get later on, probably towards May, we will um, probably tend to find warmer conditions and it will offset any cold weather that we get. So in the end, temperatures probably come out near normal, maybe even a little bit above average. And I do think it's going to be a very unsettled spring as well. So I expect more showers, longer spells of rain until we get to May. And May is the one that I think might, uh, particularly if we get a wet April, I think we might flip it flip it a bit in May and go to something significantly drier and warmer, perhaps, and have a fairly pleasant early summer. Fingers crossed we can do that, because I'm about ready uh, for a bit of an early summer warm. So, in uh, summary, the gasweathers.com spring 2016 forecast is for temperatures to be coming out a little bit milder than average over the season as a whole, but I do think there'll be a fairly significant colder period within that. Um, uh, and it could be in March, it could be in April, it could be between March and April. Uh, I can't really say when that will occur, but I think there will be some fairly cold weather at some point through this season. And in terms of the precipitation, um, uh, and by the way, with temperatures probably going warmer in May, in terms of precipitation, I think above average looks a pretty good signal until, again, we probably get to May and have something uh, perhaps uh, hopefully a bit drier and warmer then. As ever, long-range forecasting is highly experimental. It's just a bit of fun, really. It's not to be uh, relied upon by any means. Um, and uh, from next month, we'll be going on into the summer.
one of the first summer, uh, well, I'll have a quick sneak peek at the summer on the summer updates page this afternoon, actually. But the, um, the actual forecast for videos for the uh, summer will begin from next month. So come back for that. Right, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.